History has proven to us the importance of simulators. Look at the year 1942. If you're a novice fighter pilot, you have less than a 50% chance of survival every time you climb into the cockpit. Compare that to an ace who has shot down at least five enemy aircraft and now has a 95% probability of survival. With a little bit of experience, you have doubled your probability of survival. This shows the importance experience has in making timely decisions and how they affect your outcome. Fast forward to the 1990s. Flight simulators have been used in flight schools and squadrons around the nation for decades now. Pilots are first taught in a classroom and then evaluated in a simulator prior to ever flying an actual aircraft. As a result, pilot fatalities due to poor decision-making drops by 71%. The benefit of these simulators is it allows pilots to exercise and internalize their new knowledge. They're not simply learning canned scenarios from a chalkboard where they'll know how to respond if they see something familiar. They're being exposed to extraordinary circumstances that they have to mentally work through. This improves their cognitive skills by building instinctive intuition and teaches them how to remain calm and think through stressful situations. Schools like Top Gun have proven that aces are made, not born. This is not a test of survival of the fittest, but a result of learning, proving it is possible to train to the ace level without bloodshed. This level of success needs to be replicated within the infantry community, where the use of simulators can help achieve these goals in a time and physically constrained environment. Lockheed Martin's new full mission simulator for the F-35 cost almost $9 million per simulator, while a single virtual reality headset cost about $400. Aviators get the world-class training that they need, but the cutting edge of the sword, the infantry, still has to say bang to train. My name is Shane Robinette, and my idea is to make infantry small unit leaders more lethal by designing a system that allows tactical decision games to be conducted within virtual reality. According to the Congressional Research Service, the infantry, which is 4% of the total uniform force, has suffered almost 90% of U.S. military combat deaths since World War II. As important as it is to stay ahead of near-peer competitors and the technological curve by making more capable aircrafts, ships, and weapon systems, wars end by having boots on the ground. What if infantry small unit leaders were able to eliminate 71% of combat fatalities due to poor decision making, just as pilots have achieved from the use of simulators. General Berger tasked us to improve training methods within his Commandant's planning guidance. Additionally, while General Mattis was the Secretary of Defense, he made simulators for the infantry a priority, saying we need simulated training that will test our small units to at least 25 bloodless battles before they ever encounter real combat. It is an imperative for America to obtain a tactical advantage over our enemies and that its infantry units be provided the best simulators possible to train and hone their skills. For those saying the infantry already has simulators, you're partially correct. There are a handful of simulators currently available to the ground combat element. However, none of them are effective at improving an individual's combat decision making like the experience obtained while participating in a force-on-force -force battle. It was this critical capability of bringing simulated battles to the battalions that was sought after in the development of the Tactical Decision Kit. In the spring of 2017, while I was at the Expeditionary Warfare School, the infantry officers were brought together and provided a demonstration on the TDK by representatives from the Office of Naval Research. It was presented as the infantry's tool to developing the best tactical decision makers in the world, using technology similar to how a sports team analyzes game tape to prepare against future opponents. I left the brief shaking my head because I thought I would never see anything like that in the fleet. And much to my surprise, after I checked into my next unit for company command, only a few months later, the TDK arrived close behind me. I was incredibly excited to have this tool to help hone my small unit leader's decision-making abilities, as well as my company's proficiencies. However, as the months went by, 
our battalion was not able to get our TDKs operational. Time constraints during a busy pre-deployment workup, not having a dedicated space available with Wi-Fi, and not having anyone that understood how to connect everything left our kits primarily in the Pelican cases they arrived in. While at NPS, I have learned of cognitive affordance, where you break complex instructions into simpler parts. Because if a tool is too complex to understand or follow, then it won't benefit anyone. Some battalions have had success with the TDK and have pushed its capabilities. Unfortunately, the majority of infantry battalions across the fleet had a similar experience as did mine. Easy to use and understand simulators need to be made available in garrison where 70% of the time is spent during a pre-deployment workup when units are not in the field training or conducting operations. It costs a battalion anywhere from one to three million dollars to train in the field or to go on a deployment for training. It costs 5.5 million dollars every iteration of ITX. The Commandant asked in his planning guidance if we're making good use of that money. These limited training events need to be practiced beforehand with simulated walkthroughs to ensure units maximize their time in the field. The virtual tactical decision game will be easy to set up and operate so units and individuals can achieve what the TDK attempted. To use, VR headsets are plugged into a gaming laptop. The software is opened on a computer and then you execute. Users will interact with their environment by moving their head and their handheld controllers. Although no matter how easy it may be to use, it ultimately comes down to an individual's desire to improve. The use of tactical decision games largely hasn't changed since they were first implemented since the beginning of warfare. Paper TDGs, dirt train models, and sand table exercises are the primary tools practitioners have used for hundreds of years. However, technology exists for Marines to train with virtual reality, and frankly, some Marines are already doing so. However, the ultimate crux of the matter comes down to commanders and their priorities for training. If a commander is not interested in simulators, then no tool, regardless of how effective it will be, will be beneficial. The infantry culture must modify its use of paper TDGs for more effective methods, just as other MOSs have achieved through simulators and the force multiplier that they are by making individual Marines more lethal. To help with this, the digital natives that comprise our young fighting force are already familiar with these platforms, and it should not be too difficult of a transition. I am offering to lead the creation of the virtual tactical decision game. This system will provide the single most important factor in developing expert decision makers, which is gaining experience through constant, deliberate practice. Because ultimately, and this is key, simulated experience is experience. And fighting 25 bloodless battles is only the tip of the iceberg. New software doesn't even have to be created, as products already being used across the fleet will allow squads to conduct force-on-force -force training or for individuals to conduct personalized missions. Placing infantrymen in an immersive virtual environment is critical to ingraining the tactics of shoot, move, and communicate the same way that they would do in an operation. Virtual reality experts call this presence, where a virtual experience feels like a physical one. Unit commanders will be able to train their troops on any scenario imaginable because you're supplementing pen and paper TDGs with an immersive, realistic virtual one. Marines and sailors can do this while sitting in the air-conditioned barracks room as part of a unit's weekly TDG, or even with a mew floating across the ocean. It is time that we give the infantry who operate on the front lines their own simulator to improve their probability of survival. Furthermore, with the force design reducing the fleet to 21 infantry battalions, while individual battalions are reducing the overall number of Marines and sailors, there will be fewer small unit leaders and thus a higher demand for smarter, more capable, lethal leaders. In order to obtain a tactical advantage against near peer competitors, we must provide a better method that allows the infantry to hone their skills. As steel sharpens steel, these tactical leaders will improve one another's abilities, creating an overmatch against our enemies. And America can sleep soundly knowing their armed forces are trained to deploy on short notice around the world, 
ready to face whatever threat opposes them.